Hey, make sure in your brokerage you are not working on the wrong thing. We're going to be talking about that on this episode of Brokerpreneur Podcast. Running a brokerage is hard work. So whether you're focused on building your own sales pipeline, hiring the best agents, leveling up your team's production, or protecting the culture that you've built, you're in the right place. Real estate brings the challenges, and we share the solutions. Welcome to the show dedicated to broker entrepreneurs. Welcome to the Brokerpreneur Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I'm Dr. Ben Spears, the doctor of flow. We are back, Matt. We are back. Man, we had, a, back. We had a crazy December. But, uh, I'm here with the big guy as usual. I'll, I'll introduce him in case some of you have forgotten who he is. <laughs> Hasn't it's, been that long, it's Ben. Matt. It's the big guy. It's Matt. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ben? How are you? I'm, do, I'm doing fantastic, man. Oh, he beat me to it. Man, beat I me just, to the punch. What be, the hell? I could not be doing any better than I am right now. So, Super. Um, let's talk a little bit, right? Cause this is our first episode back, mm-hmm. um, of why we, why we weren't here, Yeah, you know, so for, since, you know, December 5th, I think was right. our last episode. Yeah. So we, uh, so of course we were guests on some other, on some other podcasts, yeah. which, right. And so there's a bunch of those floating, floating around out there. We also just launched, uh, our recruiting app, right. Yep. That's, uh, that helps people with that one specific part of what they do with, uh, with that, the automation that we've, uh, that we've got that helps out with recruiting that of course is, uh, that of course is in place. Masterminds are crushing it. We've got a, you know, we launched a, a open house genie as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, which is the, the leads app for, uh, for real estate agents. So no, we weren't behind the microphone, but we were behind the computer a lot. <laughs> we were, <laughs> we were behind the computer a lot. Behind the computer a lot, yeah, more so. more than we wanted to be. Absolutely, but it was Absolutely. it was so it was so worth it. And everybody's loving everything that we uh, that we got going on. So super yeah. pumped about super pumped yeah. about that. Well, Matt, Absolutely. Um, what are we talking about before? And then I'll let everybody know how to connect with us. Man, making sure that you're not working on the wrong thing. That I mean, that literally goes into what we were just talking about, right? Yes. So, uh, so yeah, just making sure that as a broker, you're not working on the wrong thing. So, so we focus a lot. Everybody knows on recruiting, retention, and per agent productivity, right? Yes. Because that's what drives profits. There's other ways that you can that you can earn profit, but that's what drives profits in a real estate brokerage. And uh, and so today we're going to dig in a little bit to that. Uh, pay a little bit of a pay a little bit of attention to specific parts of it, and uh, and then on top of everything else, Doctor Ben. The doctor of flow. We're gonna have a little bit of fun, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that, that's kind of what. That's kind of why I'm here. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't show up for the knowledge, guys. <laughs> well, guys, wherever you're listening to this, make sure you hit that follow, that subscribe button, um, and uh, and go check go check out you know everything that we've got going on at brokerpreneurpodcast.com. Uh, there's gonna be a bunch, you know, from th- this year. There's gonna be so many links in the description. I'm really just trying to add as much value to absolutely. you guys as possible. So we make sure you go down. Man. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure that you go down and you check out all of those and, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of the ones that, that you like and, you know, the other ones, maybe pass it along. Or if you, if you have a friend who's a broker yep. and you feel like they could use it, man, pass it along to them as well. But it's just a, you know, a ton of, a ton of amazing value for you down there. Yep. So Matt, yep. making <clears throat> sure you're not working on the wrong thing. Yep. So, uh, so it's real easy. We know that it's easy to kind of get distracted. Everybody yeah. knows that. Yeah. So you can be working on what's going on in your day. You can be having an absolutely fantastic, uh, uh real estate day and your, and your transaction. And then all of a sudden everything goes off the rails, right? And everything you know it starts it. exploding and all that kind of stuff. Well, if that can happen in a real estate transaction, when you're in a broker and you're running an office, man, there's a chance that that can happen how many times, right? If you're more productive, yeah, your by, office is by the hour. <laughs> more, more possible all the explosions are right. Yeah. So, uh, so those things, if we're not careful, we end up focusing on that. We end up focusing on the wrong thing. So we have to have to have a way to kind of go back and get recentered, and that means we have to know, you know, where we're heading. But there's some things that we have to have in place, even if you have goals, even if you have a plan. Yeah. The map is not the terrain, right? We talk about that all the time. I've heard that before. Yeah. So uh, so we have to make sure that we're staying. Uh, we're, that there's some things that help us stay on track the way that we need to need to stay on track, and that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna talk about. And I mean, the first one is is really simple. The right thing for somebody else does not mean it's the right thing for you, right? Yeah, yeah. How many how many times do you see brokers out there who, you know, will maybe and I think we've you know agents like any business person has really been guilty of this. Mm-hmm. But you see something that someone else is doing absolutely. and they're just absolutely crushing it, mm-hmm. and they're like, well. I'm just, I'm just going to start, I'm just gonna start <laughs> doing that like that. You know, that guy's walking around with a sandwich board sign on. I'm right. going to go do that. And then right. the whole time, 
you know, that guy loves having a sandwich board sign on. Right. And you're like, I hate this freaking sandwich absolutely. board and it, sign. And it's not working And for it you. doesn't work for you as a result. So yeah. it's just got to fit, right? Yeah, absolutely. So so don't judge uh, the results that other people are getting unless you understand how that applies to what it is that you can do or what you're trying to accomplish, right? Yes. So, so you never see everything behind the scenes. That's for sure. Okay. So where did they get their sandwich sign from, right? Yeah. Do they do they like do they like walking or are they somebody that that loves cold weather and so they're in the cold weather with the sandwich sign? Yeah, theirs is carbon fiber and yours is plywood. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, there's a big difference between all of that, right? You know it. And uh, and so you got to make sure you take a you got to make sure you take a close look at look at all of that. One of the things that that I see on a, on a, on a pretty regular basis, okay, is in franchises, you know, a bunch of brokers will get together and they'll start saying, hey, well, you know, we're all in the same franchise. Let's kind of talk about what yeah. I'm doing and what I'm leveraging and all that kind of stuff. And then they go to these masterminds or they go to these groups or they go to these sessions and they hear an idea in a one-hour class. And then they do a follow-up phone conversation, 30 or 45 minutes with somebody. And then they start trying to implement it and they start trying to rebuild it themselves in their business. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I know this happens because I was guilty of it, right? Right. Oh, for sure. And, uh, and so... Uh, you know, what I didn't get was, you know, that it took the, the other person 10, 12, 15 hours, real hard hours getting that up and running the way that it was supposed to. And yeah. I didn't have the experience of, of some of the things that didn't go the way that they were supposed to go. That doesn't mean don't try. OK, well, of course, I'm not, I'm not saying don't try. But what I am saying is if you're going to do something like that, go ahead and have a couple follow up calls scheduled when you when you have that first conversation you sit down in your mastermind with the other people and the other brokers and you talk to them and you know it's a great idea and then okay next monday let's talk a little bit on that monday call the first thing you should start off with is okay so i'd like to over the next six weeks 30 minutes every monday morning i'd like for us to just kind of jump on and me let you know what i'm running into to see if that's the same things that you were running into the person that has the idea in place they're kind of ahead of where you are Okay. Yeah. So what this is doing is this is giving you a chance, one, to make them go back and look at what they're doing, two, make sure that you're getting the support that, that you want to be getting, and three, to make sure that that idea is a growing, evolving idea in their business. Yeah. Because if they're ahead of you and you're talking to them, it's going to keep that idea fresh, and, it, and you're going to help them move it forward, which means they're always a couple of steps ahead of you probably, which means it clears that path for you. Right. Yeah. If you and that other person are not willing to do that, look out. Oh yeah, you you know it. That's a half baked idea. <laughs> that is, okay, that is so, exactly so right. just be really careful not to dive into something that you're not willing to see, not willing to see all the way through. You know the the uh, you know one of uh, one of the brokers that was a, a manager in one of the offices that that I was with, she was extremely productive. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, her and her and the other lady that worked side by side with her, and she was uh, the president of the local council of, of women's council of realtors. Mm -hmm. Board, board office president and a large board. Oh, wow. Ran, ran the office and had probably six uh, new construction sites that, that, that she was in charge of staffing and all that kind of stuff and everything. And so we, you know, we were in the first meeting and she's like, this is what my year looks like. And this all just kind of fell in place because that kind of stuff just kind of stacks up sometimes. You right? know it. And, uh, and, and so the next meeting, you know, a month later, you know, I see her and she's frazzled. Right. Yeah. As you can, as you can imagine. And she was, you know, asking for a little bit of help and everybody's trying to help and all that kind of stuff. But I stopped at Staples and I got one of those easy buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever we got to the, whenever we got to the meeting, I said, Hey, you know, I think you've got a, a million things going on, right? Just, with, I want you to have this on your desk. And when you get a chance, I know it's not really going to help, but press that easy button. If it doesn't help, give one of us a call. Right. Reach out to one of us to be able to to be able to help out with uh, with everything that's going on with you. And uh, and at that point, you know, she was uh, you could tell she was overwhelmed. You could tell she was frazzled. But at the same time, she was also like, OK, I don't have to do this all myself. Yeah, I'm not by myself. That's right. And so so all of those things stacking up that might seem like they're easy. You got to be careful with and you got to have that support team that if at that point it's not going the way it's supposed to, you're able to get the support. Otherwise. You're just compounding and distracting you from what you really should be doing. Yeah. No, absolutely. And that, yeah. I mean, that, that was, you know, a uh, 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 shameless plug here. That was the whole, that was the whole reason we came up with our mastermind group. Oh, absolutely. Right. And so, you know, too many brokers just felt like, man, I'm just out here by myself. I don't really know what, you know, right. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm lost. Right. And, uh, and we're like, okay, well we can fix, we can fix that. So, right. um, so I got on here the next thing, the wrong skill set. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So 
you know, I, I, I didn't have to, th- I think we could probably, if we needed to, I think we could skip this one. Right. <laughs> right. Cause yeah, people can read into it, but let's not. Yeah. Let's not. Let's talk about it. Yeah, man, be, a, be honest with yourself, right? Yeah. What you want to be good at is not necessarily what you're good at. Yeah. yeah okay. For sure. So, so absolutely it should be taking personality test. You should take a personality test. You should keep it in front of you. You should make sure that you go back and look at it on a, on a regular basis. Okay. Yeah. You have to know what you're good at and you, ha- and you want to be able to lean into that, but you have to be able to be super honest with yourself that you are the one that that should be taking that particular thing on. If you are not the person that should be taking that on, man, delegate. If you're not any good at delegating, you're not going to make it in the, in the brokerage business. Now that doesn't mean delegate everything, yeah, of course. but it certainly doesn't mean delegate nothing. Yeah. Right. There's and, a fine line there. there. There is a fine line. And so that's what a lot of, a lot of our brokers, right. Are, are, are selling. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and some of them sell because they have to, right. And some of right. them sell because they want to either way we're here for you. Yeah, right. We cool. Absolutely. But the, but one of the things that they run into is when it comes time for them to shift some of their attention away from some of their own sales and shift into, uh, into their brokerage so that they can leverage profitability instead of just, you know, trying to create it themselves all the time. Whenever they do that, if they don't have the skill set to manage the right way and it doesn't go the way that it's supposed to, they go back into the cocoon to, to rebirth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so, you know, they go back in and they're like, okay, that part didn't work the way I was supposed to. I hired some people. They're not doing what they need to. So I need to just jump out there and sell some more in order to put some more money in the coffers and all that kind of stuff. That, that's a skill set. Has your skill set gotten better? Just yeah. because you're great at sales doesn't mean that you're going to be great at managing a, a brokerage, but that doesn't mean you can't be. Exactly. Do you truly have the skill set for that? And the parts that don't, man, delegate those things, yeah. right? And and that's the you know a lot of people that we work with. That's what we that's what we run into is is really helping figure out how much more time should you spend in sales? How much more time should you spend on recruiting? How much more time should you spend on per person productivity? And then we figure out a way for them to be able to leverage that so that they can win doing the things one that they like and two that they got the skill set for. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I have two little boys, so we end up watching. You know, like, I, I, you know, I, I'm Animal Planet or something or whatever it is, you know, Planet Earth or whatever. And that guy's voice that narrates so is just like so legit. I wish I had his voice and I probably just you know, make everybody really soothed on this podcast all the time if I <laughs> yeah. did. But we were watching one the other day and it was a monarch caterpillar. Uh-huh. Right. And then, you know, it goes under this leaf and, you know, forms, I think it's called like a chrysalis or something like right. that. And then, it, you know, and then uh, like 14 days later it comes and it's a monarch butterfly. Right. I've never seen like one of those documentaries where the butterflies are. Now nah, I'm gonna go back be a caterpillar for a couple months. <laughs> caterpillar was so much easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I right. know how to be a caterpillar. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, once you're a monarch broker, you know, right. you, you know, let let let's keep keep focusing on that's that. Right. On that. Learn path. how to fly. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Hey, Dr. Ben here. I hope you're enjoying this episode. If sometimes you feel overloaded or alone when it comes to building your brokerage, I want you to know that we are here for you. There's so much support available to agents, but hardly any dedicated to brokers. I want to personally invite you to schedule a complimentary strategy call where Matt will help you build a three-step profitability plan that will immediately produce results. This is not a sales pitch. There's no obligation. Simply click the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the show. And so, you know, we've just kind of touched on that a little bit. I'll see if you want to add something else. But it says, you know, the wrong focus for you if you're selling versus managing. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's real easy to get distracted on the on the two of those things. Yeah, uh, because we want to go back to what we're comfortable with. Yes. Again, we're not saying don't go back and earn those commissions. That's absolutely not what we're not what we're saying. Yeah. But if you make that decision to open a brokerage, make sure that you're constantly taking, even if they're small, even if it's one percent per day, small steps going forward to improve your skill set, to prove your improve your understanding, to drive that profitability. You have to be making those small incremental adjustments in order to get better at that. Otherwise, probably makes more sense to just be an agent. Absolutely. Go somewhere and, and, and just be an agent, right? Which that's not what we're encouraging everybody to do, but we are encouraging you to take a serious look. And make it and make a decision between the two of those. And how much better do you want to be at that? Again, yeah. we're not saying abandon sales. Okay. Yeah, this isn't regressopreneur. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> All right, you guys are here because you want to crush it. That's I'm right. not even going to finish that. Right. 
That's right. Um, but so this next, the, and, and so the next one, it's funny. They all end with wrong, they all start with wrong, 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 wrong. Right. Wrong, so wrong, I feel wrong. like I'm super negative. <laughs> but uh, uh, so we're looking at wrong timing, and this one's this one's like, you know, as as far as any business on the planet, timing is like Absolutely. so important that it, that it's not even funny. And and a lot of brokers they'll they'll jump into to starting mm-hmm. a brokerage, you know, way too early. You know, some will wait way too long. Absolutely. Right. Like you know, let's talk about that. Yeah, so so here's the so here's what I would probably say about wrong timing and, and why it's on there. I think everybody kind of understands that you're exactly right. Yep. The reason why I put it on here was uh, was because just because it's the wrong timing doesn't mean it can't be adjusted and it can't be fixed. Okay. Oh, absolutely. You just have to make you just have to to take the time, step back, and go. Okay, I tried to expand. I opened another office in another place that didn't work. It was the wrong timing. I'm going to draw back. I'm going to take what I knew from that and I'm going to go open something else in a different place, you know, this way at this point, right? Yeah. That just might have been the wrong time. Yes. Okay. But but sometimes the wrong timing is the big picture, which which is what you were talking about just a second ago, Absolutely. right? That I that I step out on my own at the wrong time, that I whatever. So there's probably some brokers right now thinking, uh, hey, did I open my brokerage, you know, last year at the at the at the wrong time, right? Mm-hmm. It's only the wrong time if you don't make adjustments in your plan the way that you need to make adjustments in your plan so that you can lean forward into what the opportunities in the market are. Yes. Okay? So right now there's opportunities in the market, period. Anybody with any common sense knows that that's the, knows that that's the case. Yep. Being able to identify those means you have to slow down from all the other things that you're doing and take a close look at it because six months or a year ago when you said... Uh, to yourself, hey, I want to open my brokerage or three years or five years. When I want to open a brokerage, getting ready for for this point right here. Yeah. When that happened, your plan was, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hire so many people. This is going to happen. Here's what the market is. Here's how much the market share I want to get. Here's what blah 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 blah. Fill in the yeah. blank. Right. That changed. That doesn't mean that the market doesn't have some type of chance for you to still succeed in it. It does. You just have to look at your timing right now and say, okay, this did or did not hit the way it was supposed to. Over the next X amount of time, leading into Y amount of the time, what is it that I'm trying to what is it that I'm trying to accomplish, and what is it the right time for? Yeah. So it's not just about perfectly timing the market. It's did I do something at the right time? Did I adjust at the right time? Did I go back and look at what I needed to do at the right time? Take a take a serious look at what you thought you were going to be exponentially profitable with at mm-hmm. this point in your brokerage, and see if you're making those profits or not. Yeah. If that if it didn't happen the way it was supposed to, is it because you timed the market wrong or you didn't spend the right amount of time doing it or you don't have the skill set? Go back and look and see why you're not where you need to be. So the timing isn't just about, hey, did I open my brokerage at the right time or hey, did I add mortgage at the right time or did I add title at the right time or did I start spending money on leads at the right time or whatever. This is all about taking a look at where you're at and making sure going forward that you make the adjustments that you need to. Yeah. Complete, completely agree with that. So, um, let's look at let's look at wrong market now, mm-hmm. right? Because we got a shifting market, right? Right. So it's a perfect time to talk about this one. Yeah, yeah. So, so whenever we talk about it, whenever we talk about wrong market, we talk about how it and how it connects or combines with you. Yep. Okay. So it's not just because you you don't get to choose the market, right? You can't say, oh, this market isn't working. You know what? <laughs> market, go change yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If that's only. Not, that's not the way. That's not the way. Well, it would constantly be changing. It would change more often than it does right now because somebody else would be saying, nope, I want this market. And somebody else would be saying, nope, I want this market. And somebody else would be saying, nope, okay, I want yeah, this market. I thought, I thought, you know, you could just have your own. No, oh, yeah, just uh, uh, right. And and nobody else is in it. That's yeah. one sale a year. Can you pick your competitors? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be uh, that would be awesome. But yeah. no. So uh, so so you don't get to pick. You don't get to pick that, right? Yeah. How you react to it, how you thrive in it, how you the adjustments that you make in it. You know, if if we know we're going into a buyer's market, a great example. If we know we're going into a buyer's market, now might not be the time to open a title company, okay? Not mm-hmm. saying it is or isn't, but might not be the, uh, the right time for a title company, depending on the state that you're in, who gets to choose the title services, right? Yeah. But it might be a perfect time for mortgage yeah. because if things shift and mortgage is more, right? So, so whenever we talk about the market, look at all of it. And when you're talking about adding profitability, do we want to add agents that are just really strong listing agents in this market? Of, of course, you, you, you absolutely always want really strong listing agents in every market. But how much money are you spending once they come on board on the listings that they're bringing in? Is that going to break you? Yeah. Right? So if I go out and I hire 10 really good, you know, I get my wish. I go get 10 really strong listing agents. 
and all of them are expecting you to put up yard signs and you to pay for the for, uh, photography and you hiring someone to put all the MLS listings in and all of these things are happening, but listings are selling slowly. That market is going to put a hell of a burden on you financially. Oh yeah. You follow me? Absolutely. So, so all of those things are things that we have to pay attention to and that we just have to look at. I'm not saying don't do them. I'm not saying they can't be beneficial. I'm saying take a, take a look at the market, see how it matches with what it is that you're doing. Look at your skill set. Look at your timing. Collectively put all those things together and see where you need to spend your time and keep going back and taking a look at it. Don't yeah. just go, okay, you, you know, like we said at the beginning. We're not going to say, hey, that's a great idea. Put it in place, let it run, and then six months later, take a look back at it and see how much money it made us. We're going to make sure incrementally we're going back and looking at it, and that's a big part of what we have to make sure that we do, and the market is a, is a fundamental piece of that. Yeah. Clean up your damn curb appeal. <laughs> is, that all, is that what you got there? <laughs> that's what I got out of that. That's a throwback for all for all you regulars out there. Yep. Uh, but uh, it, last one, yep. right? And this one, I, I like that it's the last one because it's probably, I uh, will. I was going to say it's the most important, but it makes sense. We would talk about that one first, but it's the most important, but I like this one the most. Yeah, yeah I would um, the, wrong pro- the wrong problem you're trying to solve. Yeah, of course you would like that one best. You're a marketing guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> marketing and influence guys, what do they like? You know what they like? What problem are you trying to solve for the first time? It's exactly <laughs> right. right. Yep. Talk to me, Goose. Yep, <laughs> I hear you. So uh, what problem are you trying to solve both for yourself yep. and for the the agents that you that you serve or work with, right? And what problem are they trying to solve for the people that are in the, in the market? Okay. Yeah. If I'm taking a look at how to be profitable in 2023 and the year after that and everything, I have to take some certain things into account that uh, from, for sellers, part of what I have to be able to do with sellers is I'm going to have to educate them on market value. Mm, yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be a problem coming coming. Okay, so if if uh, if prices continue to increase. And the buyers have a little bit more control over what's going on. There's going to be a little bit of a battle on on pricing, okay? Yeah. And so part of the problem that you as a broker are going to need to solve for helping your agents, talking to recruits in the market, and what the agents and recruits in the market are going to be talking to their clients about is how to make sure that they make adjustments so that they're so that they're they're keeping in line with what's going on with the market, right? Yep. And uh, you know we had a you know we had a BOP live a, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and there was a bunch of agents on it and everything. And, you know, we talked about, you know, how to, how to have the conversation about, uh, about uh, price adjustments and when to have it. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, several of the agents that were on there were productive agents, but they were newer. Oh, yeah. And so they asked a question, you know, about price adjustments and everything. And you could tell with everyone in the group, the people that were really experienced in the group, they were going, oh, my gosh, these people have never had to deal with oh, price yeah. adjustments before. They've never had to really deal with expiring listings, Right. That's some of the problems that you as a broker need to be looking forward in the market and training your and training your people. Wherever you think it's going, don't take Matt's advice. Go do your research, right? Mm-hmm. I think that having conversations about marketing, having conversations about price adjustments, having conversations about overall condition of property, having conversations with buyers about, uh, about uh, uh, lending practices and how they make sure they get the best loan and closing costs and stuff, those are all conversations that your agents need to be really familiar with going into the market that we're going into. Some yep. things that were not competitive before are going to be competitive now, and things that over the past couple of years uh, were very competitive aren't going to be as competitive now. You need to be able to solve that problem for the people that are in your office, the agents that you're talking to, the recruits. You need to be able to discuss it a little bit with them so that they know that you know what the hell you're talking about because they're going to have to, do, they're going to, have to go back to the public. They're going to have to go back to their clients, have those conversations in a way that help their clients feel that they're competent to help them with the problem. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Well, Matt, yep. um, you know, we're kind of coming up on our time. Is yep. there anything else that you, um, you know, would like to say to me <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> before I put a little bow on it? No, nope, I think we're, I think we're, we could, uh, again, this is one of those topics we could spend a lot of time on. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. And over the next couple of, uh, you know, over the next couple of Fridays, we're going to be talking about this and, uh, you know, which I think you're going to get into now, but, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about this. So people will be able to kind of check in and if they want to ask questions, they can ask questions. Yep, absolutely. So guys, what Matt's talking about is something that we launched late last year, um, you know, late to middle last year. But, you know, that now it's like, okay, this, this is all kind of been proven and we absolutely love it. And we want to make sure that we get this out to every one of our listeners. 
we have the Brokerpreneur Not So Secret Society. Now, this is a, a, a 12 o'clock mastermind that we do every single Friday. It is 100% free and open for anyone to attend. There's a link in the description down below um, of how you can, you know, uh, register and let us let us know that you're coming. Um, but we get on there it's just kind of a casual, fun setting where you can ask questions about, you know, something that we talked in a, about in a, in a recent podcast or an old podcast, you know, whatever yeah. questions that you have. Or if you just got like a question about your broker, your brokerage that you want to come and ask Matt, mm-hmm. we got to do that. You know, if you if you got a question about like some kind of joke, right? You can come and ask me. Like, man, like how should I deliver this joke? <laughs> right. like, okay, well, Talk to me about timing, here, not of the market, yeah, but timing of my punchline. Yeah, exactly. Here's what I would do, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then probably do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what Brokerpreneur Not So Secret Society about is 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 all about. It's just a live, you know. We're there from twelve to one Eastern Standard Time every single Friday. Check the link in the in the description below. But beyond that, if you're listening to this, let me see if I remember how to do this. Right. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, or any of those platforms, make sure um, that you hit that 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 uh, the, what is it? The follow like button? and subscribe. Yeah. No, 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 don't. No, not, it's not. No, it's a hit that follow button. I got <laughs> if you're you, watching this on the YouTubes, what's up? What's Make up? sure you hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside it, you get notified every time we drop a new episode. And go check out brokerpreneurpodcast.com. That link is also down there. Got some cool downloads down there for you. Matt mentioned, you know, hey, you know, kind of know what your personality test is. I'm actually going to put our uh, personality test that we use. It's called the bank code. Uh, we have a link for that that lets you get your personality done for free. I'll put that in the description down It'll below. It'll email as you well. directly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such will, a yeah, I'll send you an email with all your results. And it's like, gosh, like 10 or 15 pages or something crazy like that. And it's absolutely spectacular. Uh, so make sure that you take advantage of that. Everything, everything down there is, is absolutely is absolutely free. So um, we hope that you you enjoy it, Matt. Yep. We do these podcasts and try and provide as much value as we can for one reason and one reason alone, my man. Tell them what that is. Because we just want to be part of your win.